asked everybody on Facebook what they thought I would do with a long row of old cat litter containers, I received a lot of interesting responses. Some of them were things that we have done in the past, like use them as nesting boxes for chickens. Some of them were other good ideas just for general use, like playing games with the kids. But we have another idea, and I can't say that anybody really quite grabbed it. But at the same time, I think it's a fairly unique idea. So let me show you what we're doing. Well, you remember this structure, don't you? This is the hothouse that we constructed to save our potted fruit trees from a freezing night that we had just a couple weeks ago. But now there's no doubt, spring is here and the temperatures are going to stay above freezing. But we still have this framework. So what are we going to do with it? Well, we are going to turn it into a container garden to grow vining fruits, vegetables, and their companion plants in. So let me show you how we're doing it. In the hothouse video, I explained to you that we lifted these panels off the ground to make room for the height of the trees on the inside. Seeing the panels lifted off the ground is what gave me the idea to try to do containers underneath of these panels. I know you could do this in different ways, especially if you were in an area with better soil and plant directly into the ground. But I want to try it this way and see just how positive of a result I can get. Each of these containers is filled with about three quarters of a cubic meter of a compost and manure product that we brought from off the site, filled to the top, compacted lightly, and then the top four or five inches loosely filled in with more of the same material and also some potting mix, which we combined along with some natural fertilizer and Epsom salt. Each of these is planted both front and back, or that is to say the inside and outside of the trellis. Some of these are fully planted. Some of them only have one or two things in them so that we can come back and plant them again later for a successive crop. All of these have some sort of companion plant growing in them. For the first time, I have actually bothered to label everything. I do have a good map of what I placed in here and a timeline of when I expect it to come to harvest and when I'm going to plant seed for a successive crop. Even if I sat here and tried to read from a list, I'd probably shoot this video 10 times just trying to read the list right. There is a lot of different things happening behind us. We have everything in here from two different varieties of tomatoes, a slicing and a paste variety. We have got those little musk melons whose name I cannot pronounce. They're French. Starts with C-H Santrillus or something. I'm sure somebody can give me a pronunciation below. We have zucchinis and two different kinds of cucumbers. We have dwarf crookneck squash and then a lot of different companion plants from oregano and parsley to catnip, uh, carrots, We've got three different carrot varieties in here, and so much more. It'll be more interesting to show you those things when they actually start coming up. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.